high quality product managers will not have a problem to find a job today you know on, on, on any of these markets taking risks is my daily job so <laughs> i'm doing it every day we need all people uh, who are working on the product to understand the product to understand what they're building what kind of uh, needs they're satisfying the old time old-fashioned way I give you the specification, do it by the specification is not uh, here anymore. To be agile and to understand your product is actually the key uh, factor. In the future, uh, the role of the machine versus the role of the human is becoming more important. At the end, maybe, you know, product measures will be machines. This is Chair, place where we discuss innovations. After 30 episodes, we proved that innovations are so important today for the individuals, but for the companies as well. But there is another part of the story. Uh, who is running those innovations in the companies? And uh, on this subject, on the subject of the role of product managers, we are going to talk today with Predrag Popovic, who is a group product director at ASECO Southeast Europe. Uh, Predrag, uh, welcome to chair. Pleasure to have you here today. Thank you for the invite. So, I want to start this talk uh, with you. Uh, can you explain to me what is the role of product managers, what they actually do? In few words, uh, product managers are in charge for everything uh, which is uh, connected with the product, with the product development. So, in few words, everything. But if you want to have some more, let's say, formal definition of what product managers are doing, they are in charge for the entire life cycle of the product. So, management of the entire life cycle. What does this, what does this mean? It means actually that uh, from the moment when uh, we start with the idea about some product till the moment when we retire some product or announce end of the sales or the end of life for the product, they are managing entire life cycle. It usually starts with some discovery phase uh, when the idea is born. Then we have some definition phase, planning phase, development phase. And as the last phase at the end of the journey comes this uh, retirement phase when we decide to uh, take out the product from the market. Uh, in let's say going a bit more deeper than this, uh, 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 some of the key activities that they are working on are um, market analysis, uh, market researches, analysis of the competition, analysis of the competitor products, analysis of what customers are asking for, what are the customers' needs. And these are the key activities that they perform. And of course, basically based on this, what they get as the information, they're creating uh, product visions and the product roadmaps. Of course, besides this, uh, these key, key activities, they're also covering a lot of other activities and they're working uh, with a lot of other roles and people in the company. So they're working uh, jointly and closely with the sales and marketing uh, people, uh, defining, uh, let's say, go-to-market strategies, defining the pricing, the licensing models, uh, define, doing the market researches uh, all together and similar. And uh, But they're also working closely with the delivery people. So the guys who are in charge uh, for deployment or delivery of the product on the customer's site. It's very important that uh, uh, one thing is to sell the product, the other thing is to deliver the product in the optimal way towards uh, our customers. So the, 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 let's say the, their, their activities are pretty much complex, a lot of different activities are part of their job. What is also maybe important to be said here is that when we are talking about the product managers, Sometimes we are calling this function uh, with different names. Sometimes we are talking about the product managers, sometimes we are talking about service managers, sometimes we are talking about uh, product marketers, sometimes we are talking about experience managers, sometimes we are talking about business analysts. So we can call them in a many different ways. All these roles are pretty much similar or if you want the same. Uh, and all these uh, roles are critical for uh, companies, tech companies uh, that want to produce uh, tech products and to invest in their IP. So, based on everything that you said to me, it's, it, there are very important people in the organization right now for the for the yes. when when we talk about innovations because they are uh, uh, like in the middle, they are bridging all the other teams and communicate with all the other teams. How hard is it to find a good product manager, managers today? Uh, it's not easy. The market is constantly growing. The demand for this kind of roles, this kind of people, is uh, rising. I would say every month in the last two. 
uh, years. Uh, uh, there are some statistics showing that uh, demand for the product measures is 30% bigger than it was two years ago and constantly growing. So it's not easy to find uh, persons who are capable to deal with all these subjects uh, that I mentioned, to be able to connect the business, the IT, the user experience, and to build, let's say, the, the product. Uh, maybe we can go deeper in their role. Uh, based on your experience and, and, and your role that you're basically leading to do, uh, hold the team of, the, of those people, what are the challenges that they are facing? What are the, the, the biggest obstacles that they need to overcome in their day-to-day -day work? From one side, they need to ensure that you know, they are maximizing the benefits for the customers. They need to ensure agility. They need to ensure innovation. And of course, they need to ensure profitability of their products. <laughs> uh, <laughs> as a bottom line, right? As a bottom line, yeah. <laughs> this, is, this, this, this one counts, right? And then there is, uh, let's say, the other side, that they need to manage very complex uh, environment with the many roles uh, around them and uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, connections and dependencies. So this is actually the biggest challenge. They have to participate in all these processes. They need to work closely with the sales, marketing, delivery, uh, support colleagues, with the colleagues from uh, finance department, similar. So they have to uh, put their effort into these activities as well. But they need to balance, you know, because they need to also to do their own job, which is a product management job. And this balance, balance is usually, let's say, the, 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 let's say the answer for many things in life. <laughs> balance is here the answer as well. So they have to define priorities. They have to define actually uh, more like what they are going to uh, do than to do things in a perfect manner. And sometimes, you know, what is a challenge there, uh, and let me be a bit more pl plastic uh, in explaining this, sometimes from the tactical point of view or operational point of view, some pre-sales activity might be the most important one, right? And then, okay, there is another customer where we have implementation project in place. So there are always some priorities. We have to uh, always think that product managers cannot be in each and every step. We have to also uh, uh, keep them to do their primary job, which is product management and development of the product itself. Uh, they uh, also one maybe important thing or the instrument that they have in their hands is also, uh, uh, let's say, empowerment of other people in the team to take part of their job. Yeah, I wanted and to this, ask you exactly This that. is one of the critical things. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, speaking about product management and the teams, usually, you know, when we say, uh, let's give, uh, let's say, more power to developer to decide about the product, you know, and about some product, uh, let's say, features and stuff like that. And for most of the people, this seems like a scary thought, you know, let's don't go there. You know, it's not to go the direction, you know, developers are there to develop code, right? And, uh, you know, product managers are to, here to decide about the product. Uh, it's just the opposite. You know, we need all people uh, who are working on the product to understand the product, to understand what they're building, what kind of uh, needs they're satisfying uh, on the for their customers, right? And what is here also important, I will share my personal experience. Uh, when I came uh, to ASEC, it was like three and a half years ago, we started one very complex banking project or product, new product. Uh, complex in the sense, okay, uh, very, let's say, modern uh, technology stack, architecture, so everything perfect, you know, uh, microservice-based, cloud-native, everything perfect, but very complex business behind that, you know, very complex business uh, calculations, uh, business uh, banking business processes, and so on. And when we started talking with these young developers, the team was, you know, one very senior person who is a product manager in the team, and plenty of very uh, young guys who are developers, developers, like talented, engineers, but talented, but yeah, very talented. Yes, this is what I have to say, but really young at that point of time. So not much of the experience, you know, DevOps engineers, uh, Q&A engineers, you know, developers. And actually, you know, they started, you know, they're feeling very good when they're coding something, when they're changing the Angular code, and then when they're doing some DevOps uh, things uh, behind, but they don't even want to use banking words, you know. <laughs> they don't want to say credit worthiness. They don't want to say exposure. They are using some other words. You know, they are so scared about that, you know, that they don't because understand. It's probably a completely separate a different field for them. Yeah. And now, after three and a years, uh, three and a half years after, we have those people that are becoming really an experts for some domains. I 
guarantee that they can explain for some domains uh, why this calculation of the credit risk or knockout criteria should be like this and not like that in the banking business. And I do believe uh, in this, you know, everybody in the team have to be focused on this and have to understand the product. The old time, old fashioned way, I give you the specification, do it by the specification is not uh, here anymore. To be agile and to understand your product is actually the key uh, factor. So based on what you said to me, uh, product manager here is enabler to, to, for a team to grow and to learn about the product. That that's right, that's right. Uh, these product teams uh, are really becoming teams uh, uh, lately. You know, it's, usually in the past we had uh, for example, product manager, you know, and then we have some development teams. Now we are having teams in the product management. So uh, we have a product manager who is mostly uh, and usually focused on the markets, externally focused, let me say it like that. Then we have a product owner who is, again, pretty much focused externally as the rest of the team. They have to understand the demand and the, what they're satisfying but uh, uh, mostly more focused on tactical stuff and how the development process works. Then we have also, you know, new roles like ProDOPS role, of course, you know, fashion. <laughs> so uh, the, the guys who are in charge for the operations and collaboration on the, on the product development. Of course, I don't have that kind of a role in my teams. <laughs> I see just a fashion. We have this kind of a needs, right? But uh, yeah. I don't call but anybody But you can find products. it in there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, uh, um, you mentioned that project uh, that you started three and a half years ago and uh, how it was interesting. Can you share with me uh, some other ones that you can disclose that, that are interesting, that are doing, that you are working right now on them that can show some, uh, that spark of innovation that, that you are enhancing with, with uh, product managers? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me share with you maybe a couple of uh, intro information. My role is generally is portfolio management role. So my primarily job is to deal with the entire portfolio of ASECO products, and this is a huge portfolio. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and uh, let's say making the right moves on the portfolio level, understanding whether we need to invest in some products, uh, whether we need to build some new products, whether we need to acquire something because we have some gap in the portfolio and we to, maybe we will not be that fast to develop something. Maybe it will be much smarter to acquire some company and to, to have these capabilities in the, on the portfolio level. So this is my general, what I do and what is my main role uh, in the ASECO as a group product director on the group, on, on the group level. Uh, so in general, I'm dealing with the portfolio level uh, uh, topics, but also, of course, with the uh, projects and the products which are uh, below. Uh, one of the pro, uh, projects or products which I will mention now is our digital platform uh, uh, product, which is that, that, that one is uh, probably uh, one of the most complex that we had in place. You know, you, one thing is when you're building the product itself, completely another story when, is when you're building the platform. The platform, yeah. platform needs to satisfy all the needs of the product teams and also, of course, all the needs of the, let's say, end users or your customers. So building the platform was something that we started uh, back then uh, uh, three and a half years ago and uh, what we also accomplished uh, and still uh, investing in that. Uh, why I'm mentioning the platform? Because all our, uh, let's say, digital products now we are building on the platform. There is more than uh, 10 plus, let's say, uh, different products which we are building in different industries. And the platform is completely, uh, mm, uh, let's say cloud native platform, a uh, platform that is completely agnostic, cloud agnostic platform can run on each and every, uh, let's say, uh, infrastructure. It is pure and true microservice based platform. So I'm hearing a lot of microservice definitions, <laughs> but pure and true microservice based. It was based. a hype for a while. And it then was, everybody was saying that they're doing microservice architecture, yes. but... They are, uh, what I usually see in place, and I have to be here pretty direct, I see uh, 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 distrib distributed, let's say, uh, uh, monoliths, more than microservices in practice. You know, when you tell me I have a microservice platform, and uh, but you, when you take out this component, every, everything will fail. Okay, man. That's not if, microservice. This is not microservice. <laughs> so I'm talking about uh, the real microservice uh, uh, and cloud native platform uh, that we, on which we are building additional. So it resolves everything what is the IT behind, and on the, that platform we are actually building our business components and microservices as well. 
So uh, I want to. You mentioned the, the, that you guys uh, developing something internally, but when you see the gap, you acquire some companies. And uh, uh, lately, you uh, you've done uh, some of this work here in in the region. Can you share me some story there? I'm going away a bit from, from the product managers, but I'm going to go back to them. <laughs> It is interesting story for me to to hear from from you who is doing this job. Uh, what are the challenges of of, of this? And yes, when we analyze our product portfolio, uh, if we see that there is some gap, as I mentioned before, and we see that we should maybe speed up some, uh, let's say, uh, capability in our portfolio, we tend to also, uh, let's say, scan the markets and see what is there on the market. Can we acquire some of the companies? So we have two major pillars in ASECO, uh, growth pillars. One is uh, organic growth. So we are, uh, let's say, investing in our existing product portfolio and in the new products. And the second important pillar is actually this M&A or growth through the M&A process. So acquiring other companies. So we, we are sometimes acquiring good businesses because they are good businesses. So there is not, let's say, a lot of additional strategic value. So I'm not uh, in charge of that part of the business. But we are also acquiring sometimes uh, businesses which are strategic for us. They are filling some gaps, some capability which we didn't have. Uh, or was Something not, new means emerging on the market. That's right. right. Or something what we had, but it was not... Uh, sufficiently matured before. So one of the examples is that uh, at some point of time we understood that we'll need a bit more capability in the uh, machine learning and uh, AI domains and we started scanning the uh, regional markets uh, from Turkey, from, from uh, Croatia, Romania, Serbia and all other markets in the region and uh, selecting, pre-selecting a couple of companies and in the end Last year, we acquired one of the company from the local market, Thingsolver, uh, and that company became a part uh, of our group. Now, we are actually spreading this knowledge and these capabilities across different products. So we have currently more than 10 different products that are becoming intelligent using Thingsolver modules as, as a base. So products coming from the sales, the marketing, Uh, uh, let's say, uh, part of the portfolio, but also from the security part of the portfolio with some anomaly detection, let's say, models behind and similar. So, uh, I always like to, to add some personal touch to, to the episode and uh, ask some uh, rather personal question regarding your career and the things that you did uh, so far. Uh, since you're uh, doing a lot of innovations Uh, in different areas, I'm sure that you need to uh, take some risks. risks. Uh, can you share to me some of the biggest risks that you take, took in your career and uh, how that turned out? Yes, uh, taking risks is my daily job, so <laughs> I'm doing it every day. <laughs> and uh, in general, the risks which I'm managing right now are portfolio level risks. So whether our portfolio of our, let's say, products will um, uh, tomorrow Uh, mm, mm, let's say, uh, uh, be executed in a way how it is supposed to be executed. Of course, uh, uh, the risks ca- are, uh, you know, uh, there and uh, there is also this ratio, famous ratio that, you know, return return risk ratio. So if you don't uh, take risks, uh, you don't, uh, uh, you know, your returns are not be uh, not going to be that high. So definitely uh, we are taking risks. Everybody have to take risks. Also, my background is from the banking, you know, and, you know, If you are in the bank and you don't want to grant a loan to somebody, uh, you, you, know, you will not problem. be the, the, <laughs> yeah, you are not anymore in that industry. So every granted loan has some sort of a risk. What is important about the risks is that they are calculated, that they are managed, and that, that what we are in general doing on the portfolio level. If you ask me about some more specific risks uh, that we took, I would say that uh, one of the projects, which is uh, this digital platform project, where we actually build a platform from, for different products that are going to be built on top, was uh, 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 an end of with, with a pretty big, let's say, risk behind. Why? Uh, uh, there was a, a risk associated with this. Uh, because, you know, uh, today, uh, technologies are changing very fast, you know, and it's uh, the, the fastest pace of changing technologies that we had ever before. So every year there is some new technology replacing some, some legacy one. And you have to build a product, all the platform, that will, uh, on top of which will, you will uh, build different uh, other products. And at some point of time, you have to be ready to take out some technology and to 
put some new technology because it's instead. already outdated it's already outdated and you have to be flexible so one of the key things or the key risks which we saw at that point of time is how to be ready to acquire new technologies in some soft manner uh, and uh, that do not, do not you know mm, uh, require that you change the software on the customer side and, and, and similar, you know. So this was one of the, let's say, biggest risks. The project was actually at the biggest risk uh, also due to this. And there is this, uh, let's say, uh, fragile spectrum methodology. I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but, uh, you know, there are the products that, uh, you know, uh, are, uh, you know, trying to avoid the changes, fragile products. So they are trying to avoid it, to, you know, just you know, skip the change. I don't want to change anything. Uh, there are products uh, that are resilient products, so they are trying to, you know, fight back the change. You know, I, you know, you push me, I push back <laughs> towards you. So they are fighting back the changes. There are products uh, that are usually called um, agile products that are trying to adapt themselves towards the changes which are happening around. And there are something that is what is called anti uh, anti fragile, pardon, uh, products that are trying actually to, you know, uh, embrace the change. And, and to take it. the best out of it and to actually embracing the change, improve. And this is what we are actually doing, you know, and what we actually uh, manage to do on the portfolio. You cannot say, you know, uh, tomorrow we have new technology, so let's forget about it, you know. Let's use the legacy one instead, you know, because new technology is not there, you know, by chance. It's there because new technology brings something new to us, some new value. to some new value to us, to our customers. And we want to actually embrace new technology to change the legacy technology and actually give this back, this new value to our products, which are built on top and to our end customers. So this was one of the, let's say, biggest risks that we had. Uh, and uh, okay, uh, the outcome of it is that we have plenty of products built on that platform that we are also changing technologies, you know, uh, plenty of things happened in this um, four years, three and a half years that we are developing this, uh, some of them pretty, let's say, big in the context of the technology behind all these DevOps practice, uh, Docker containers, you know, orchestration engines were changing throughout the time, then specific technologies. So there we already, let's say, had chances to test this uh, and testing is one of the biggest things and the most important things in the product, uh, product development. So do test things with the customers, uh, with, with the markets. Uh, don't believe that what you built is the best, you know, or you have the best idea. Test the ideas uh, as well. So this was one of the, I would say, the biggest risks uh, that I took uh, actually during my career in the development. You mentioned testing and it's interesting, but uh, uh, my opinion is that uh, with testing you can change the product itself. It's not just yes. uh, uh, validating it. You can, you can go and reverse engineering with the testing. Yes, one of the biggest uh, uh, blind spots I would say that product managers might have is not to test their product. So uh, one of the biggest problem is that they are uh, detached from the market, detached from the customer. So we have 10 smart people sitting together thinking, okay, my idea is the best. I fell in love with my idea and I will implement my idea no matter what, and it will be the best at the end of the day. So this usually do not end up like that. <laughs> so what we need to do and what we need to do very often is to test, to test the assumptions, to test the products, to engage the customer on the product to validate, as you said, uh, when we started with some idea, uh, small chances that we will end up with the same 100% same idea at the end. It will be more like 80%, you know. We need to pilot. If the test is showing that we are not doing some things good, we might decide to pilot, to change them. If test is showing that for one module, we have a problem, with, you know, customers are not asking for it, you know, we might decide to sunk it. You know, and usual question is, you know, but we invested already 50% of the investment for this module. Why not to continue? You know, you, what, you, you want to throw 100% of the investment or just 50, you know. So sunk it to time. Fail fast, you know. Don't, uh, you know, drag these things throughout the time and, and test and, and pivot. This is, this is the, the, the most important thing. Also, there is a lot of, um, let's say, um, um, business cases or articles talking about this. You know, what is the difference between good software development companies and the ones that are not that good, you know, that uh, the ones that have, uh, let's say, uh, figures on the this, let's say, first line in the PNL and the last line in the PNL, which are rather stable or declining even, you know, I'm talking about, of course, revenue and the profits, yeah. you know. So for the companies who are doing these things good, uh, uh, the uh, uh, usual, let's say, conclusion is that they are more open towards externally open, more 
uh, basing their product development on the market researches and on the direct communication with the customer. And also the agility is the, let's say, very important part of it. So to be able to pivot, to change, you know, to adjust. Uh, the companies which are declining or keeping the same, you know, these figures throughout the time in, the, in their uh, P&L, uh, usually they are more oriented internally, you know. They're discussing the smaller, let's say, um, groups. They discuss it uh, like in some closed, uh, let's say, environment, and they're trying to get the feedback from this closed environment. And this is the maybe the crucial and the most essential point for each and every product manager. You have to uh, be externally oriented. You have to be market oriented and market driven. Basically, Otherwise, bridging the team with uh, with the outside. And that's the right. That's right. That's right. Uh, what is the future of product management? Where we are going with with this role, and uh, uh, maybe uh, we can talk about a bit more what is needed uh, from the from the education sector, government sector to to get more of uh, of quality people in this domain. Mm, product management, uh, let's say, mm, uh, future is bright. <laughs> <laughs> in simple words. Because uh, you need so many people. I need so many people in my company, so it's, you know, the, the list is big, uh, but not only, only uh, our company, not only ASECO, Southeastern Europe. So uh, we, uh, there is a need, uh, the constant need on all the markets uh, across the world. And uh, as we said, you know, this demand is going, just becoming higher and higher. So uh, high quality product managers will not have a problem to find a job today, you know, on, on, on any of these markets. So the, 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 uh, the perspective of, 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 the, of, of uh, this job, of this job industry is really a good. Uh, what is important for the product managers uh, to, to understand uh, is that uh, uh, they're not any more product managers uh, of what we usually uh, called like, uh, you know, uh, core product. They are now product managers of the whole product. So core product was actually zeros and ones, you know, and the code behind. They are product managers of the whole product, of the entire experience of their customers with their product. So it, it involves also the process of selling, the process of supporting or maintaining the product, you know. So all this process is now a part of their job. They have to understand and make uh, customers happy uh, 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 about it, you know. The other important thing is what uh, we said uh, about the teams, you know. Product managers is not a role, it's not one person, it's a team. And everybody in the team should share part of the responsibility and should be empowered by the product manager to take every time a bit more while deciding. This is also very important uh, for the speed and the agility of, of uh, the product uh, development process. And one of, uh, for sure, of the biggest, let's say, trends that are also impacting the product management, uh, it's a trend that impacts uh, and uh, disrupts all the industries. It's, it's a general trend, but it, but it's also impacting a lot uh, product management practice is this AI trend, right? So we are talking more and more about data-driven product managers. We are uh, talking more and more about AI-led product managers. What does this mean? You know, uh, product management have to rely on data. There are simple, let's say, examples like, you know, you have to understand uh, basically which uh, functionalities your customers are using, which functionalities your customers are not using to understand why they're not using it using it, which functionalities your customers are using in the wrong way. You, know, you assume yeah. that they will use it in one way, but you see that the journey is something different, what they're doing. Then going one step further, you have to understand to analyze the processes. We started in the product management analyzing internal processes. Let me take an example of a bank. You know, We were focused on the how to optimize processes from the bank perspective, how to make them, let's say, more efficient. Then a shift uh, change towards the customer, towards end customers of the bank. So how to make this customer journey more efficient and, you know, more pleasant for the end customers. Now we have a tools on top. We have uh, AI tools uh, like process mining tools that are helping us with, us with this. A process mining tools that analyze the processes, uh, show which part of the processes are working in a proper manner, where we have this, you know, reciprocal activities that somebody is sending back all the time, the task uh, from one to another, where we have uh, the highly cost processes uh, 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 there. They are also analyzing uh, our processes from the perspective of the, of the customer. So how this customer journey looks like? Is it, you know, uh, fragile, so he stops at every point of time, then continues, or he can do it as a one-stop shop. So he comes, buys, and finishes everything, what we actually want to achieve at the end yeah. of the day. So all this is supported by these tools. Then going one step even further, 
we have let's say models which are helping us to define uh, the best next action in the tool for the customer so my application becomes a bit of a product manager itself saying okay for you as a customer and for the similar ones like you are i advise you to do this as a next step so the you know these steps are just you know going further and further uh, for the software as a service, so let me also share this, uh, this uh, let's say, uh, data or AI-driven product management is becoming even more important. So product managers have to understand what is the lifetime value of these customers, what is the churn ratio of their customers, you know, uh, and all these insights which they can take uh, from, from, this, from this data. So in general, uh, currently today, uh, product managers are asking uh, these systems uh, questions Systems are giving back the questions, and based on this uh, information, they are changing the product itself. Uh, in the future, uh, the role of the machine versus the role of the human Indeed. is becoming more important. Yeah. At the end, maybe you know, product measures will be machines, <laughs> but uh, uh, we don't know. Currently, we cannot say where this is going to end and how you know nobody can predict this. But definitely, this role of data is becoming the crucial for understanding your own product and to actually building your product. Of course, these data are not only internal data which you have to, even in this definition phase of the product life cycle, you have to plan to capture, you know. These are also the external data coming from competition, coming from other external sources, and all together gives you the insights how to, let's say, define, for example, licenses for a product, you know. You can define them in one way, in another, in another you can define a license per user, you can per click, per call, whatever how to define the best license you know, for, for the products. All these things and all, uh, are actually based on the data behind. Based on everything that you said to me, the uh, role of product manager is, is changing uh, very fast. Uh, yes. AI is influencing that uh, on a very high pace. Yes, that's right, that's right. And they have to be also agile and pivoting their mindset as well. Yeah. <laughs> as we are piloting the products, we have to pivot the mindset of product manager. In the past, it was a role which was more uh, towards this core product, you know, uh, uh, towards let's build something and hope the best. Now we are verifying things much faster. All these data are used for verifying if the product is going in the good direction. So we can have an impulse very fast, you know, we yeah. implement at the first customer and we see that he never clicked or he's using completely wrongly the, 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 the functionalities which we put it there. So all these trends are impacting that this role is changing very fast. And what is also important that some new, uh, let's say, uh, also uh, uh, skills have to be acquired throughout the time, mostly around this AI and, and big, big data. Frederick, thank you so much for this conversation. I enjoyed today. And uh, for you out there, uh, subscribe next Thursday, next innovation. Thank you very much.